What's up, everyone, and welcome to Ben's Car Reviews. I'm Ben, and today we'll be at a second of 2024 Dodge Durango. Let's get right into it with the chart. Well, you guys, for the first time ever, there is going to be two charts to go through all of these trim levels on this Durango. There are so many to look at. So here's part one, ranging from the SXT through the RT Premium. This will cover all the SXT, GT, and RT trims. And these price points range from 41 to 61,000. So there's a lot of trims in here clumped in for a $20,000 price range. What are the engines? The SXT through the GTs and the Citadel will come stock with a 3.6 liter V6. It says on their website that the GT is getting two more horsepower. I don't really know how that's gonna happen, if the torque's the same, but anyway, you get 293 or 295 horsepower with 260 pound-feet of torque. The RTs are gonna bring you a 5.7 liter V8, 360 horsepower, 390 pound-feet of torque, a lot more power if you go with the V8. All are paired with the eight-speed auto, standard rear-wheel drive, and optional all-wheel drive for all of these trims. MPGs for the uh, six-cylinder, 19 city, 26 highway. R2 is not too bad for a V8 pulling this thing around at 14 city, 22 highway. Now, part two, and these are the big guys here. You have the SRT 392s and the Hellcats, ranging from just about 75K up to just over $107,000. You're going to be either getting the 6.4 liter V8, that 392 engine, 475 horsepower, 470 pound feet, or you're going to get the supercharged 6.2 liter V8. 710 horsepower, 645 pound feet torque. So, a lot of power to be had here, depending on how much money you want to spend, really. And the other great thing about these is they come standard all wheel drive. MPGs, if you're worried about that, not the car for you. I wouldn't even look over there because it's not very good. Real quick, guys, here Ben's car reviews a strata being most accurate, relevant information in under 10 minutes. There's no misleading and no wasted time. That's something that's intriguing to you, and you like this content as you watch. Please like and subscribe so continue to grow the channel. Let's keep going. The Durango is certainly a favorite of mine. I've been a big Dodge guy, and I've always loved Mopar muscle. This Durango lineup is extensive and offers a lot. Boy, can you get a beast of a vehicle at the top of this trim ladder. Even the base trims look great, and they serve their SUV purpose extremely well. Dodge doesn't offer many models, even less now, but they have all the trims you could ask for. And lastly, before I get into it, Dodge is mostly showing off their top trims in their gallery here. But the bodies are larger the same, so I'm not too worried about you not getting an accurate feel for the vehicle or the design. You know, they really all look largely alike. Dodge says these rigs have a near-perfect weight distribution, which, help, which helps you in the corners and overall performance. There's an available Bilstein Active Damping High Performance Suspension, which controls the vertical position of the wheels and axles according to the position of the chassis. There's standard electric stability control and ready alert braking. The vented performance hood is one of the many functional air intakes that Dodge likes to incorporate. Obviously, the higher you buy, the more intake you're going to get with cooler looks. The wheels are large, very well designed, especially on those top trims. And the SRT trims are going to get you striking Brembo 6 picks piston calipers tucked inside of them for great braking performance. You're going to get four pistons in the back. Dodge always offers such great color options and you'll be getting the same here in 2024 there are racing stripes available uh, that really fit this durango so well and the stripes are even available in many different colors as well uh, i believe six and you'll see them all on the website led lights seem to be the standard now across the board for the headlights taillights and daytime running lights i hope dodge isn't tricking me here my 2023 challenger has halogens and it's an abomination there's available auto leveling headlights, which is nice to see too, help you around those corners. Love the dual exhaust outlets. There's available roof rails for nice versatility and they can handle up to 150 pounds up there on the roof. The Hellcats have a zero to 60 time of 3.5 test seconds, max towing at 8,700 pounds. The 6.4 liter or the 392s, zero to 60 and 4.4 with the same towing. The 5.7 gets you there in 6.2, can tow up to 7,400 pounds and the V6ers have a max towing of 6,200, whether it be rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. I've included pictures detailing the different package options and what they offer, so you can see it easily here in the pictures. The reason, uh, or the choosing the best bang for your buck is difficult, uh, a little different than it usually is. There's just so many options here. I think in the end, any of the GTs or the Citadel will be your best for your money. However, the caveat would be, 
If you have the budget for the Citadel, that usually brings you into the range of the RT, and therefore getting you into the range of the V8s. But I'm also factoring in the long-term extra expenses of the V8 compared to the V6, fuel economy and insurance costs being the two biggest constants that will significantly more expensive in the long run. The GTs especially can really outfit you with a fantastic setup, and even though it may not, may not have the flair of the Hellcat or the 392s, it's a very realistic way to get an awesome Durango with a lot of comfort. A well-designed interior here from Dodge, you can really get a lot. If you want to spend the money, once again, you got to shell out to get the real nice things. This thing is no doubt the quickest grocery getter there is, and you can fill three loads of people in it, two. That's a lot of people, three rows, up to six. One thing about Dodge interiors is how similar they are across the board. Yes, the Hellcat will be available with nicer materials and cooler colors than the SXT, but the design is the same, which is nice if you're in the market for a lower trim. Available 10.1 inch infotainment touchscreen next to a clear and easy to see driver's info gauge area. You get some cool graphics too on that if you get the one of the Hellcat trims. The Uconnect 5 system is one of the best out there. I have a Uconnect in my Challenger and it's so easy to use. Very user friendly and I like the graphics. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto capability. Available power sunroof, which I have in my Challenger. It's very nice. Definitely suggest getting that. There's a wireless charging pad. Paddle shifters are ideally located on the column if you have those in your uh, Durango. Available 19 speaker Harman Kardon sound system. There's over 50 different seating configurations, which is no surprise given there are 40,000 different trims. Available on the Citadel and SRT models, the second row center console includes climate control, USB ports, and 115 volt outlet. There's 85.1 max feet of cargo, uh, cubic feet of cargo room, which is fantastic. And the upper trims are the ones that are offering, obviously, here the seriously nice materials and amenities like Alcantara and all the nice colors. Many key drivers assist safety and technology features standard and more available. Overall, I'm really liking what Dodge is bringing to the table here with this Durango lineup. My biggest beef with these setups, uh, though, is one I usually have, and that's that the lower trims have a smaller infotainment screen. I just feel like we should be beyond that in 2024, and if you're spending at least 40 k how do you not deserve a big, bigger screen? In review, guys, if you're in the market for a vehicle like this Durango in 2024 here, I'd say the normal comparisons, let's just go with the V6 options. The more normal car would be the Hyundai Palisade, maybe Kia Telluride, Jeep Grand Cherokee, uh, you know, a more, uh, you know, common, not out of control, crazy muscle car, Ford Explorer, stuff like that would go up well against this. If you go with the V8s, especially with those 392s or the Hellcat, I can't even think of anything to compare to those. All-wheel drive, 700 horsepower, that's just in a league of its own. Seriously cool if you can get one of those. I'd be super jealous. Totally, you know, let me borrow it for a few weeks. Uh, I can keep it if you really want. Uh, just let me know if you happen to, to get one of those and you want to work that out. I'll feature you on the channel if you do give me a Durango Hellcat. I'll definitely make sure that happens. Um, but in review, you know, if you want to get this Durango, you're going to go with a great car. I know someone that has one. I've been in it frequently. Super comfortable ride. Uh, nice high off the ground, and it looks great no matter which trim you have. So, hopefully, this video lay things out clear way for you guys. Thanks for watching this Ben's Car Review. Please subscribe if you're not already. If you have an idea for a future review, drop in the comments and I'll see what I can do. If you'd like to become a member of the channel, I have that option now. Check that out and join if you'd like, and I'll catch you on the next Ben's Car Review. <laughs>